All right, we're taking calls right now. Our, our phone line's open. Here we hit bounce. <laughs> <laughs> no, our phone line's open right here. We got, we got, we got, uh, what would you, what would you, uh, what would you take for one of these? Those aren't for sale. They belong, <laughs> they belong to the family. I, I, if you ha can't see this, I'm sure they'll get zoomed in, but, but they've been sitting over on the shelf. And actually we had somebody, uh, you're famous for making lures. And we, uh, we've, we've actually had folks who know that and have, have emailed in, show the lures. I know, that's <laughs> uh, quite amazing. 20, 25 episodes in, and we're finally. Well, they've been there the whole time. Right, just out know. of camera. So we've got to... Not out of sight, but out of camera. Right, we know they're here. So walk us through this. You know, w when we talk about the manifest presence and we're having this conversation, the, the beautiful thing about this gospel is that he really cares about the things we care about. I mean, even the crawfish bro you were talking about. Or he's the instigator. He's the, well, yeah. It's, it's, it, it's where it begins and where it ends. It's, it's this beautiful uh, relationship that, you know, I, I, even the story I told, I don't know how many episodes back about, did I, I forget now. Did I tell the story about my son praying for a puppy? Yeah. I did that on here, right? That was, that was recent. <laughs> They're blurring together, bro. But the, <laughs> but the idea that, that he, he, his heart is for us and that we're, there's a relation like this is, this is life giving this. You showed me, you've got a laser. Do now. Yeah. yeah. You make all these by hand. Those are. Well, I, I make them all by hand. I'm just going to use the laser cutter to cut, cut out the things. But, um, I'm working on getting that completed right now but this this is to me where the light of jesus really does illuminate our lives yeah and it's uh, so in 1992 i was dragging the christmas trees uh out to the driveway for the garbage and i heard cut off a piece of cedar yeah and make a lure yeah so i we didn't got a saw cut off a piece of seed and thought, how do you make a lure? But and you're you've been fishing. I mean, this is yeah, this is I, something you love to do. I loved bass fishing. I've, I've caught plenty of bass in my life with right. that already had brim that size in the in their you know stomach or whatever, but yeah. still eating. Yeah, and you couldn't find anything like that. Yeah, especially something that looked that authentic. But I didn't know how to do it. So, but Laura, my oldest daughter. She came out of the shop one day outside my garage, I had a little area set up and I was working on something. She said, she said, Daddy, how in the world did you know how to do that? Like, how did you know how to paint them? Right. How did you know how to carve them? How did right. you know how to make the eyes like that or the tails like that? Or the... Right. And I, I looked at Laura and I said, I've got a friend who loves to fish. And he gives me ideas on fishing lures and nothing makes him happier than when I'm carving them into being. And she's like seven or eight years old at the time. And she's looking at me and she said, do I know your friend? Yeah. I said, sure you do. I'm gonna put these over here now. Are you afraid of them? <laughs> yeah, I don't want them. I'm gonna knock them down and then I'm gonna. Well, okay. <laughs> They're pieces of art. Yeah, I've had people give me $400 for them, <laughs> collectors, because they're so original. Uh, but this is in 1992, and she, she asked me, how in the world do you know? And I, and I told her I have a friend, and she said, do I know your friend? I said, yeah, you know your friend. She said, literally, she said, is it Steve Horn? Huh. I said, no. She said, is it, is it Mr. David? I said, no. She said, is it Clayton James? I said, no. And she's looking at me with this amazing look because she knows the answer, but it, it can't be true. Right. She knows that I'm talking about Jesus. Yeah. And she knows it's true, but it doesn't fit with the the cultural understanding of Jesus and of God that sure. you just pick up in, He's kind of in the at atmosphere. Sure, yeah. And I yeah. said, well, this friend loves soccer, too. And this friend loves music. I love this guy, too. This friend loves music. Love and, and I said, you know when you're in there playing on the piano? She said, yeah. I said, that music doesn't start with you hitting those keys. She said, what are you talking I said, that music starts with the Father, Son, and Spirit. Yeah. They put that music in you, and they love to, to see it coming out in you. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
then I, I didn't know them because I've got grandkids now when they <laughs> draw something. We call it art. Technically, I'm not sure what you call it, but we put it on the refrigerator. Yeah. And then think about think about what the Lord has on his refrigerator that we've made. And for me, it's lures yeah. and crawfish and uh, <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah, and and so when I hear when from my friends in the charismatic world about the manifest press, I, I'm not denying it. I appreciate what they're saying. Yeah. I'm just saying if if you go from a cedar tree, Christmas tree, to one of those lures, yeah. that's not just me. Yeah. That I didn't start with me. Yeah. I didn't even know how to do it. My mother's told me all my life I was an artist, but I've never I don't know how to paint. Yeah. In fact, yeah. there's no paint on those yeah. lures. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Um, <laughs> and there's oranges in your uh, crawfish, too, but you ain't going to give me more than that. So, you know. Well, I could give it to you, but you're soon never going to get the, the Dr. K's mystical root. But <laughs> anyway, to me, that is the greatest question is okay. How do we understand this? And for me, this is Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the way it works. It works through the renewal of our humanity. We are participating. Jesus didn't need uh, the servants to get water for him. If you can change water into wine, you don't need any help. But he asked the servants to get water, and they went and got water. And what did he do? He made it into wine. So he he's walking me through making a lure and learning how to do it. And then lo and behold... You go fishing and they work. Yeah. They work all over the world. I'm like, this is fun. And now I got grandkids and they want to make them. They want to be in the middle of it. Yeah. So that's why I got to simplify the process so right. they can right, be a right. part with the laser. With the laser. Yeah. Right. It's a good book. It's a pretty good book. Humble guy wrote it. Good looking <laughs> humble guy. And, a, and an amazing fellow endorsed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah John Crowder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crossallworlds.com is where you can find us. We're loving this conversation. Listen, we're uh, we're supported by you guys, and we're grateful when you partner with us that way. Uh, uh, if you need to find our resources, Crossallworlds.com. Got it. Yep. You learned and, fast. Yeah, we're getting pretty good at this. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you. You this what you're talking about? I I um I grew up right that same. I'm kind glad of, you did. Uh, um, it's the jury's out. <laughs> Whenever I'm around you, I get, I don't know why I get a little bit younger, <laughs> but I, uh, you know, your daughter, she knows it's Jesus you're talking about, but she's also wrestling with the Jesus, the God that's been presented, this distant God, even if she wasn't raised in that household, it's there, it's being, it's in the culture. It's in the culture. And so I had that as well. I, I mean, man, I grew up in a beautiful, loving home. You know, I, I saw love modeled. Uh, but I was constantly conflicted with with the messages being given wherever I was. This gospel of separation, or not the gospel, but I should say it like that. Well, there's a biblical word for that: scuba. Scuba, yeah. Philippians three eight. And and so, but I had, <laughs> yeah. You want to tell them what it is? <laughs> no. <laughs> Let them look it up. Look it up. <laughs> Google it. I had. I would. I, I had. I would have this. I, I had this passion for God, always did. And in fact, I remember my, uh, my kids were young and they blow out the candles on the birthday cake and you know, everybody makes a wish, you know, if it's your birthday, you make a wish. And at one point, uh, my, my wife said something about what'd you wish for? And oh, I said, I wish for the same thing I always wish for. You know, everybody wishes for this. She's like, what? I'm like, you know, a greater revelation of his presence. And she starts laughing. She's like, Jason, not everybody wishes for that. <laughs> not everybody believes he is present. And so, right. So that's that's me. This earnest desire for for His presence. This earnest desire for God. And so that, I had this prayer thing going on for years. And it was, until I was forty, I I, I would be like, uh, well, here's what started happening. Around the age of thirty five, God would start saying, Hey, what do you want? And He would, Jason, what do you want? To, what do you want? What do you want to do today? What do you want? Hey, ask me for anything. What do you want? And my response was, Whatever you want to give me. Whatever you want to give me. And around 40, I was out for a walk and I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm walking with him five years now. He's been like, he'll come to me and go, Hey, Jason, what do you want? What do you want? Has anybody ever had that kind of conversation with the Lord before? <laughs> and I said to him, I said, whatever you want to give me, whatever you want to give me. And this is what he said to me, son, I'm getting tired of that answer. He got real strong with me. He's like, listen, 
Imagine you asked your son every day what he wanted, and every day he told you, whatever you want to give me. I want to give you something. What do you want? And I realized right then, and it's this journey, I realized he was basically saying, we're friends. You want to be friends with me? I want to be your father. What is on your heart? I feel like in the, in, the, in the last 10 years, he's been really interested in me discovering what's on my heart. And it's the oddest thing that I couldn't get there. And I think, you know, some of what I was raised with, the separation, my heart was weak. I couldn't trust it. And so for my journey, it's been this, what you're talking about, that I understand when your daughter's like, is it possible that, that Jesus is, is into dance? Is it possible as I was a kid that, that Jesus is into hockey or into music or into that God loves us so much that he created us with these passions and these desires and he wants to partner with us? And uh, I love that because that's a relational God. That's, that's well, he's the one that thought all this stuff up. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, listen to this right in the first page of the, of the book. Yeah. It said, um, and God blessed him and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish. <laughs> so if you want to be a legalist, be fruitful, multiply, uh -huh. fill the earth, uh -huh. rule over the fish. <laughs> now, which is what you've done with, with your lures. That's what you're doing with your lures. You're ruling over the fish. I, I think that this is, to me is where all of the stuff that I have been hammering on for years, where it, the lights begin to come on for us. Yeah. Uh, and there's all, this is all under the heading of the secret. It's not that now the Holy Spirit's at work and I'm going to become something. I'm going to see who I am and what's at work. And then I'm going to get to see what's hindering me. Because if I think that those lures are my creation, then I'm going to get very proud and very, I'm going to be comparing all the time with others because yeah. it's got to be the best, you know. Or if, And eventually that's going to wear me out. Yeah. Uh, but if I realize that this is the Lord's idea and the Lord's creation and His joy in me, creating something that delights me and for my for my benefit because he loves me it, it changes the way i see my humanity and this is what yeah. jb torrance used to say to us all the time is that jesus has assumed our fallen humanity reclaimed it sanctified it and given it back to us and we and we think to follow jesus means that we're going to give up carpentry and give up being firemen, right, and give up go being husbands and wives, God. and all these different things. And so I, I think I was in Canada. This has been several years ago. That, David, you and I were together, but it, we'd done the whole conference weekend or whatever, and um, ended up at some potluck Sunday lunch with Presbyterians, if I believe or I may have been wrong, but it was certainly Presbyterian, and there the Presbyterian elders there. And, Anyway, so I, I went through the line, got my chicken and some some um, something to eat, and I looked over in the corner in the other room was a single guy sitting over there by himself eating. Right, so right. I just beelined it over to him and sat down. And so we started talking. I said, I said, so what do you do? And he said, he said, uh, uh, he looked down. He said, I'm a truck driver. I said, really? I said, what do you like haul like an 18 wheeler? He said, yeah. I said, what do you haul? And he said. Just in taking interest in him, he's looking up now. He says, I, I go twice a week down to uh, Miami, Florida and pick up a whole truckload of fresh flowers and bring them back up here. And I look at him, I said, have you, have you stopped to think about how many people that blesses? How many yeah, proposals? Wow. How many funerals? It brightens a little bit. How many weddings? It glory, you know, I said, you're having an That's impact. Insane. You and he he literally looked up at me. He's face to face now, yeah. Because I have not recognized him according to the gradation of our of our culture, which is truck drivers and you know are not up there with doctors and lawyers or whatever. In in our vain speculation, I'm recognizing the glory of God in what he does driving a truck. And he leaned over and he looked at me and he said, "I challenge you." He said, "Name me one thing in your house that was not delivered by a truck." Right. And I I was just thinking. Air. That's it. Air. Everything else. You came up with something. Well done. Air. You know, and we had a good laugh about it. But I thought, I watched him, 
you know, he's in a re very religious context on this weekend, now Sunday. Now we're having the Sunday lunch thing. There's a bunch of elders and probably pastors around. They, they have given themselves to God, yes. full-time yes. Christian ministry. Yes. I'm just a truck driver, so I'll eat by myself. Yeah. And I was like, this is so beautiful. Not recognizing him according to our customs, or St. Paul would say, according to the flesh, but according to the glory of God that is in you. That's the light shining, not to say, now, Jason, we're going to go become a different thing. Yeah. This is your humanity in me. Yeah. Now, it's twisted. There's ego. There's problems with blindness and delusion. We're going to get that untwisted. Yeah. This is this gospel, it, 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 if you want to use the word, it deconstructs hierarchies of exclusion. It, 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 it removes the hierarchy completely. The, the thing that I love about this conversation, right. well, that's where it comes from. That's where hierarchy comes from. So it, it, it invites every, everything, everyone into the sacred dance. It's, it's the invitation that, that there is no sacred secular, secular divide. It's, it, and I know you, I know what you mean by that, but you said it invites everyone into sacred dance. Now, I won't say yes. What it in, we're in it. Sure. We're dancing. Yes. What it invites us to is to see it. Yes. It's and a revelation of yes, light. Good, um, yeah. Like Laura suddenly saw playing the piano in a different light. Right. This yeah. is not just me. Yeah. This is me playing in them, and well, they and, and they're playing in me. And what's f amazing is is so to me. This is the language of friendship. This is this is, we've been invited into a friendship, a face-to-face -face friendship with him. So the lures to me is him saying, "I want to be a friend. Yeah. I want to be friends with Baxter. I created this in Baxter. I want to do this with with Baxter." That's that's what uh, I I was feeling in that conversation. Even then, it was, "Hey, imagine if your son, who you're, you're raising to be your best friend, that's that's what the nature of this relationship is. Imagine if you couldn't have an authentic interaction, a conversation with him where he can share with you his desires and vice versa. And it's this right here that I, I've, I'm excited about uh, the the Passion Version, Brian Simmons, he, he refers to uh, that scripture, I, I, I never called you servant, or I, I no longer call you servant, I call you friend. For a servant, uh, doesn't, doesn't know, know what the master's doesn't doing. Doesn't know what the master's doing. A friend, I tell everything the father has revealed. Uh, Brian Simmons translated it, and this is where, uh, you know, I I'll trust that he's he's navigating it uh, correctly. That's not my wheelhouse, but I think he's right. He translated, "I never called you servant. I've called you most beloved friends." And then continues on and and pull and. And for me, I'm like, it's the truth in the garden. It's the truth if you think about this life after, you know, that that the invitation has always been face to face. But as you said, it's it's that's the reality. We're awakening to it. Yeah, it, and, and we're invited. Well, let me let me continue that thought on John. Yeah. You know, however you translate that, he's talking about I'm, I'm calling you beloved friends. Yes. In the resurrection narrative, he yes. says, you go to my brothers. Yes. You know, and I, I'm going to to my God and my Father, and you go to your brothers and uh, my brothers and tell them, you know, I go to my God and, and I go to our, our God yes. and yes. our Father. And I'm like, <laughs> well, that's the bar mitzvah. Right, right. You know, you've gone from being beloved friends, right. members of the family, child's heirs. Yeah. Now you're going to get to see this and you're going to get to see the Father with my eyes. And so that's the prayer to me that goes along with this is, Lord Jesus, I don't want to miss out on what is. I don't want to misperceive what he is. And the last thing I want to do is misperceive what he is and go over here and create something that we call religion. Yeah. That's nothing other than what we're, we're in the psych unit yeah. and we're delusionally thinking we're making our way to God. No, when Jesus is showing us our humanity, yeah. I mean, most of the time he spent on earth, the vast majority of time he spent on earth, he was making tables right. and doors right. and gates. Right. Right. He wasn't preaching sermons. Right. He compared, he, I would hazard a guess that he made a lot more tables than he did preach sermons. Yeah. But he was learning how he, you know, how we see things in the delusion. We don't see what is. We don't see his love, his goodness, his creativity, the joy of the Holy Spirit, the, the glory of the Father is already in us. And he's come to meet us in our darkness to begin to explode the barriers well, that's so that we can see and rejoice and live and yeah. be free. Yeah. from all the delusions, including religion, trying to get, get to a distant deity or bring that deity down with his blessedness. It's a beautiful revelation. Well, and for me, the, the, that revelation, the I remember the liberty of, you know, uh, 
chasing the call of God, ministry, signs and wonders following. We've had these conversations where trying to do something for God, right? And the the shift in my life where I realized I was already this I can't get closer to him than I already am, right? Like I'm living from, and the idea that ministry for me then was painted with the brush of his last three years. And he reframed and said, no, my entire life, my entire life was ministry, right. was what we're talking about. Right. So you're a truck driver, that's ministry. So it reframed it to say, no, ministry is, is simply you living in the confidence of my affection, more sure today than you were yesterday and living as that expression and whatever it is you're doing, right. whatever right. it is you've right. been invited right. into, whatever it is that is the, the, the area of your influence. What, and, and, and so, I, all of a sudden, you realize Jesus was a was a brilliant minister for the entire, the entirety of his life. That the first thirty years re, re, looked like making tables, and and living confident in his father's affection, living sure in their union in that mo moment. At some point, the father said, uh, "Let's make a public declaration of what's already already happening. This is my son, whom I love. With him, I'm well pleased. And now, let's go do some. We'll go show them." the fruit of our union. Let's go, let's go do this publicly together. That for me, the, the great shift in my life was, was around, around looking at the life of Jesus, because I, I thought, you know, uh, if you, if you haven't done a miracle by the time you're, by the time you're 30, you know, uh, maybe, maybe you should pack it in. And maybe we need to ask Jesus what constitutes a miracle. Because I think every child conceived on earth is a living miracle. The greatest of all the miracles. Mm -hmm. Human life. Yes. Out of nothing. Come on. Out of nothing. Yeah. And will never cease to be. This is, so it's, to me it's like the light turns on. You begin to see your humanity not separated. So now, if I see myself separated from God, I've got several things. I like golf. I love to cook crawfish. I like hanging out with my family and friends. I, um, I love making fishing lures. Um, I love being in fellowship. So all these basic things. I love to study, read. Yeah. So yeah. all of that's yeah. me. Yeah. Okay? That's yeah. got nothing to do with God. Yeah. So now somebody's going to say, you need, you need to uh, be more godly. So, okay, so I'm going to give some of this up yeah. to pray harder. Yeah. I'm going to give some of this up to... to uh, Separation, it, fil it filters into everything. It, it has completely diluted us yeah. so that we can't see what is. And so now I'm beginning to see what is about these, what's up about these lures. We've decided some things are holy and some things are unholy. We start playing this moralistic game. It, this, this world belongs to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus created it in him. There is only Christological air. There is no life here, like but the life of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> There's only Christological air. The only life there is is the Father, Son, and Spirit. Evil cannot create life, but what it does is can deceive us so that we twist Jesus' life with his Father in us, in our ego and in our delusion, in our pain, in our trauma, yeah. and into addictions, et cetera, et cetera. And he's just saying, I'm in the middle of this, and I'm done twisting this. Yeah. And take sides with me. I'm untwisting this. You don't half see back to what these lures are about yet. You can't halfway understand what your <laughs> what your books are about. Come I mean, on. just when I was working on Patmos book, um, I, I had done the full draft, full first draft, and was working on the second draft before I realized consciously that Aiden yeah. represents main character in the book, main character in the book, and he, he's a burnout suicide, burned out. Uh, Burned out suicidal theologian, yeah. uh, been there and done that through four, five, or six different denominations, the charismatic renewal, been to therapy, studied the church, started the church fathers, uh -huh. um, had never found what he, what he experienced as a young boy. It, it never crossed my mind until I started on the second draft that Aiden represents Western Christianity. Wow. He's a good man. Yeah. He's not, he's, he's not yeah. bad. Yeah. He's worked really, really, really hard. Doing the best he can. Been faithful to what he was told to do. Yeah. And it left him nowhere, yeah. and it left him desperate. And so when John gets to walking with him, he's not saying you got to learn to do this and this and this and this and this. He's just saying, man, you don't see what is, brother. Yeah. And he walks with Aiden to the point to where Aiden is ready to have the revelation of Christ 
himself, and he does, but he still thinks that revelation is outside of him. Right. And John says, no, because he can't figure out why John didn't see what he was seeing in the cave. And he's like, he's like, no. He said, John finally says, Aiden, that revelation was inside of you. That revelation of Jesus was inside of you. Yeah. He's like, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, he finally understands it was inside of him, but he still doesn't understand it's inside of him as broken, twisted, sinful, whatever, depressed. Yeah. Then he's like, that's a whole other uh, discussion. They have. And he finally goes, oh, my goodness me. And because he says, this cave is a gift of Jesus to you. Yeah. You can come here anytime you want. Because yeah. this cave is inside of you. <laughs> And I, it took him forever, even after the revelation, to, to process it, you know, to see it. This is the, this is the journey. This is him walking with us. Yep. And this is we're, we're in the Emmaus robe where he'll, he'll walk with us, hidden to reveal himself. That's the invitation. It's, uh, it's, it's the friendship. It's the fellowship that we've been invited into. We're, we're, we're at 20-something minutes. Man. One last thought. Give it. One of the great revelations in this is joy is not just us enjoying something. Often what joy is, is our experience of the Holy Spirit or the Father, Son, Holy Spirit enjoying us. That's it. That's it. That's beautiful. That's just mind-boggling. I, I, it's true. That's so good. <laughs> We're going to continue this conversation across allworlds.com. You can find us there. And you can actually get this book there as well. we